independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Sky condition clear. Chad, a GPS helicopter 160 will be taken off from the north ramp. So all of these people just crossed? Yep. I mean, this is hundreds of people. Oh, it's not hundreds, it's thousands. Have you ever seen anything like this? Nothing. This is the far exceeds anything we've ever seen down here. We can see at least three different spots where migrants are crossing over into the United States. Yeah, you know, this weekend, super quiet on most stations about the insanity of what's going on in Del Rio. Uh, and if you guys don't know, and it's so funny because people on the left are like, there's nobody there. Uh, you know, there's 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 maybe 500, maybe a couple thousand. So one, one guy who, who I, I, if I say it's it's green, he'll say it's orange. If I say it's orange, he'll say it's green. It really doesn't matter. But it makes me laugh because the completely ignored, by and large, little thing here, little thing there. But they were more interested in what was happening on the, you know, what's going to go on at the Capitol. They've got all these people there. There was like eight people and 5,000 camera people. It was a joke. But not in Del Rio, Texas. Not in Del Rio, Texas. And it's funny. Here's a Democratic mayor in Del Rio, Texas. A little concerned about all the people that are there saying that at the current rate patrol is unfortunately ex- is strained to its limit beyond limit now the local mayor a democrat uh, pleading for the biden administration to boost resources saying that at the current rate it will take weeks to process these migrants and signs they're having to settle in are visible from the air a makeshift camp is going up and the mayor says at least one woman has given birth Most of the migrants will be expelled or placed in removal proceedings, say federal authorities, who also say more resources are coming. Yeah. Yeah. It is an absolute nightmare. It really is. It is a real nightmare. Very little being talked about. Now, the first group already on their way back. Video from ABC affiliate WPLG showing planes leaving the airport in Del Rio, Texas, Sunday. On board, some of the estimated 13,000 people living in camps underneath an international bridge nearby. Most of the migrants were from Haiti, a country in crisis after a presidential assassination and a recent earthquake. The crowds so massive they can be seen in satellite photos. Yeah, huge. First group being sent back. Now, the worry is that people are going to find out that they're being sent back. People are going to find out that they're that, that it's going to 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 kind of get in and out of the camp that people are being not stopped here, but sent back. But here's the other side of things. With all that being said, who's being sent back? It's on a case by case basis. But generally speaking, if you're a single adult, you're amenable to Title 42. You're amenable to immediate expulsion. If you're a family unit, and three quarters of these people are family units, most likely they will be allowed to stay. There you go. And Title 42 is rather new, if you will, that's being used. Title 42 allows for the immediate deportation of asylum seekers because of risks posed by the pandemic. But Del Rio Border Patrol agent Brandon Judd says the policy applies primarily to individual adult migrants. If you're a family unit and three quarters of these people are family units, most likely they will be allowed to stay. Thousands of migrants from Haiti have come through Mexico into Texas because of political turmoil and the devastation of an earthquake back home. And the Haitian government's like, come on, let them stay, let them stay. It is, it is a joke. Very little being talked about. Very little being talked about. Very, very little being talked about when it should be. We have, who knows, 12,000, 15,000, 16,000. It's more than four, I'll tell you that. It's more than 2,500. It's more than tens of thousands of people are there. And they've walked here, spending tons of money getting here. Mexico's having issues as well. They're expecting more. It is an absolute nothing. Quiet. Very little being talked about. Sure, I'm sure Fox and One American News and... and, uh, you know, Newsmax cover it. But outside of that, very little. even the Times was forced to cover it, both L.A. and New York. But it was a, it's, it's a blurb. This is a joke. It really is. 200,000 people got into our country last month that we know about. 
Now, Brandon Judge take me on a tour a couple times when I've been down at the border. And he is one of those guys where he got to the point where, because he spoke out so much, getting rid of him and he was a pain in Obama's ass was virtually impossible. And he has spoken out on numerous occasions about what a joke it was. And he said to us, again, like talking even about the wall, you build an 18-foot wall, I'll show you 19-foot ladders. We got to a point where we had so many ladders in some of these places that, you know, that they were, we didn't know even what to do with them. We must figure out a way to stop this. We must come up with a better plan than allowing everybody in and pretending like it's not open borders. And in a day and age where everybody seems to be so concerned on the left about the spread of the coronavirus, you can't tell me 200,000 people coming in here isn't going to pose an issue for the communities that are going to be taking people in. You can't tell me that. They're not testing all these people. They're not giving these people vaccines. They're not doing any of those things. They don't have the resources for 90% of the stuff they have to do. It's a joke. Nothing from the White House. Very quiet. Not a shocker. Not a shocker at all. By the way, when you look at what's going on across the board, there's a lot of issues with, quite frankly, (laughs) I mean, it is... I look at what's happening with Biden, and he is quiet. He is having so many issues. And I sit here and I think to myself, you're still pushing this, this let's go get boosters. But then on Friday, they're like, you know what? If you're 60, 65, get a booster. If you've got compromised immune system, get a booster. The FDA came out and crushed it. From Afghanistan to the boosters to the border, he's having serious issues. And you got inflation thrown in on top of that. Well, look, I think he's got a a pretty big uh, credibility crisis on his hands because all of these problems in some ways showed up after he said something basically the exact opposite. Afghanistan withdrawal wasn't going to be messy. This wasn't going to look like Saigon. Uh, The booster shots, he came out and essentially said eight months and even indicated maybe we should start it as soon as five months. Now we're not sure if anybody under 65 is going to get a booster shot. And of course, the border has been, it's pretty clear we have a bigger problem now than we've had in years look he's got some credibility issues on the world stage he's got a lot of work to do yeah now i want my president to succeed i don't want him to fail but he's got some credibility issues to say the least and the whole america's back thing is flopping right now we failed at the get out of afghanistan not saying it wasn't gonna be messy i don't care who it is there was going to be issues then you look at the immigration that's all on him period case closed in the story that is all on him 100 percent on him you rang the dinner bell during the second during the second debate you said basically well you know we're going to find a pathway to citizenship for 11 million can we stop saying 11 million it's not 11 million it's probably closer to 25 million they've been saying 11 million for like 10 years as if nobody's come here since Then you've got inflation. What's going on with the coronavirus? It has been an absolute horrible last 90 plus days for the president. I want him to succeed. But at some point in time, you've got to start tackling some of these issues. You do. Afghanistan is done and dusted. Now, how do we go about not so much repairing, but protecting ourselves from future issues that may come and arise from that region? The booster shot. This isn't happening unless the CDC overrides the FDA, which rarely, if ever, happens. And then on the other side of stuff, immigration and inflation. Two things that you can take an absolute run at at this moment in time. You better start doing something. You better start doing something. Because the frustration level I see, even from Democrats, they didn't want Trump. This was the alternative. They're not thrilled with what they got. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. All that being said on the private world of space travel. Guess what? 
Four civilians on the mission known as Inspiration4 orbiting the Earth about 47 times at 17,500 miles per hour. Their SpaceX Crew Dragon experiencing 3,500 degrees of heat as it re-entered the atmosphere. <laughs> Splashing down in the Atlantic near Florida. Rescue boats at the ready. Yep. That is a win. That is a win. How cool is that? It's a big win very exciting came home safely and this was space space right so we've had the you know richard branson and bezos we're going to space now these guys and gals went to space space they orbited the earth they came home safely and this was definitely i think a win for for all of us and you know i was sitting there last night thinking to myself it's like TVs, right? You want a 100-inch TV five years ago, 10 years, HD, 100, you know, four, you know, 4K the whole night. Oh, that's going to cost you five grand. Now it's like, hey, Walmart's having a sale. You can get it for 59 bucks. So insane. It's the same thing here. You watch what happens in 10 years. In 10 years, the, you know, $100 million price, price tag will have come down to something manageable. In 20 years, it'll be Travelocity. Maybe even sooner, because that's where we're headed. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Hope you had a good, good, good weekend. My pillow gives you amazing deals on the My Pillow, which is awesome. On the Giza Dream Sheets, which are normally a hundred bucks, now they are forty nine ninety nine. Under fifty bucks, fifty percent off. The best sheets around. Long staple cotton, grown in the Mediterranean. You will love, love, love these. I love mine. Cool, comfortable, kind of a sateen feel. Slide right in them. Sleep like a baby. Sleep like a baby. They've also got the My Slippers. They're back in stock. Get those. All these deep discounts and more. 60 day money back guarantee. Tons of warranties. You will love these things. Get them right now and save big. Get the Geezer Dream Sheets, the My Slippers. Go to MyPillow.com. Use the promo code Benson. MyPillow.com. Grab that promo code Benson and save big right there. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. FBI investigators announcing a body was discovered in the Grand Teton National Forest saying it could be missing 22-year-old Gabby Petito. Human remains were discovered consistent with the description of Gabrielle Gabby Petito. Yep. Is it? I don't know. Do I think it probably is? Yes. If you were to ask me who do I think did this, I would say if I have to guess, her boyfriend. Remember, they went on a trip, right? They were taking this trip, and they were going to go and enjoy some time driving across country. They are supposed to end up in Oregon, and he returned back to Florida without her. And it looks like this body is, is, is hers. This is her father speaking about it. My gut tells me that something bad happened, and I am never... I'm never going to be able to hold my baby girl again. Yeah. Now, he's kind of like just disappeared, right? People are pissed because they want his family to like find. It's a crazy story. On top of that, in and around the same area, there were also apparently some murders. The two had been fighting. Police had pulled them over because apparently they were in a domestic dispute at one time. Neither were charged, but they said they've been fighting all day. Uh, it is it is a crazy story. All that being said, people have been asking, well, why is this thing so important? Well, first of all, it takes your eyes off so many other things that are going sideways, uh, you know, when it comes to inflation, pandemic, <laughs> Afghanistan, the immigration debacle that's happening. But on top of that, it's like a shark attack. And, I, and this sounds horrible, but the reality is, and it is, it's got, it's got intrigue. 
it's got all the things that you look for in a story. Okay? So when you're looking for a story like this, a drive-by shooting, and you find out that there's 25 of them over the weekend and all these people are like, that's nameless, faceless. And it sounds, that sounds harsh, but that's kind of the reality of it. How many people will drown today in the ocean or in a pool? How many people will get attacked by a shark in the next couple of weeks and we'll figure out, whoa, 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 whoa. This has all that. It's got sex. It's got intrigue. It's got mystery. It's got a, a boyfriend that's disappeared. It's got all of the things which makes it intriguing. Plus, it's got the media pushing something. Sometimes stuff just takes off. They were trying to go viral themselves doing stuff. Some of it's the family. How hard's the family pushing? But there's a lot to the story. And do I, yeah, I mean, if you were to ask anybody, it's like, if, if my child goes on a trip with her boyfriend, and I don't have a child that's old enough to go on a trip with her boyfriend, and he comes back and nobody's heard from her, and they went to the National Park, which, by the way, seems to have quite a lot of deaths in it. Maybe the National Park isn't a place to go, but all that being said, what do you think is going to happen? Now, do we know that anything happened? No. you got to say allegedly. But if I was to go, hey, you got to bet your house on this, I'd be like, ugh, I'm putting it on him did it. Him who did it. And the fact that he's disappeared, plus there's some issues with some other things that have happened in and around that place. But it's got intrigue. It's got sex. It's got all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's perfect for the likes of the, you know, the the 48 hours and Dateline. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Chad Benson Show. and show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. If we don't get one disease under control, you may find legislative bodies taking whole classes of people based upon propensity of conduct well, to say, we're going to put you in a certain category. We're going to demand mandatory testing for you. Oh, who is that? Have that guy fired. Was that some? Oh, that's Biden from way back when. Oh, yeah, that's him. Biden from way back when. We're going to demand those things. What's next for the coronavirus? Could it be the kids? This news comes as hospitals are seeing a record number of cases of pediatric admissions, with some hospitals running out of ICU beds. As hospitals see these upticks, the debate over COVID policies in schools rages on. If this is approved, almost every K-12 through student in the country will be eligible to get vaccinated. Eligible doesn't mean will. What would be approved? Well, kids... Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 5 through 11. The company says the trial gave more than 2,200 children a dose one-third the amount given to adults and found that it produced minimal side effects similar to adults and older children. And Pfizer says the results, which haven't been peer-reviewed, show the antibody response at that dose in children was at least as strong as the full adult dose in patients 16 to 25. So this is the next battle. And people have been asking me, will your kids get it? Well, my kids have all had it. Not the shot, but it. The evil, the unwashed, and they were too young to get the shot. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Jack will get it. I'll tell you why. He's at that age, had his first hockey practice yesterday, by the way. I don't know. He's he. I'm like, is he skating with... 
are those newborns? <laughs> he's like eight feet tall compared to them. But I don't know if he's going to get it. His mother and I will talk about it. As far as, you know, my other ones, uh, one's too young for even this, and the other ones are, it's a maybe. They've both had it. I For kids, it's different. I've always said that. I said, I think you'll find parents that are even all about getting the shot themselves. And again, it's the shot. It's not a vaccine. The way that we think of it. I think you're going to find some parents that are hesitant, especially with younger kids. I do. I do think that. Well, you don't want your kids to be sick. It is still very, very rare for anything serious to happen to them. If you go on the CDC's website, if you're to believe that, most of the kids that have even struggled or had real issues or have passed away out of the 500 and something, 370 something were pretty much already in the hospital with several comorbidities. So I don't know. But we're still talking about boosters, even for the adults. And that's been all over the place. The FDA just crushed the the hopes, minds, and dreams of the Biden administration on Friday by saying, look, if you're over 65, you got comorbidities. Yeah, you know, it might be good. Outside of that, not yet. On Wednesday, you said in an interview, quote, if they say we don't think there's enough data to do a booster, then so be it. I think that would be a mistake, to be honest with you. So on Wednesday, you said it would be a mistake. So but now you're saying you don't think it was a mistake just because I look at the data and say I would do it this way. That's the reason why we have qualified groups of people. Data will continue to come in. And I believe you're going to see an evolution of this process. We go on in the next several weeks to months. Yeah. By the way, just to let you know, the two, so I think it was, there's 18 or 19 panelists, two voted for it. Those two, not scientists or doctors, essentially bureaucrat politicians. So think about that for a second. Do I think, and it's not, a, at this point in time, it's not a booster. It's, it's a shot. Just like you would get with the flu shot. So maybe once a year. Uh, once every nine months you're going to have to get this until they come up with something that's going to give you blanket protection across the board uh, while we still go about fighting this thing in bizarre ways because that's what we're doing. Rather than treating this thing like the flu and everybody being understanding, well, Chad, what about all these places that are having real issues? Those places are having issues for several reasons. We talked about it last week. I'll give you a quick snapshot. In the South, low vaccine rate or shot rate, absolutely. But also look at the, out of the, 10 unhealthiest states in America. Nine of them are in the south, in the southeast region, right? The the only one that is not is Indiana. Out of those, they're the states with the largest group of obesity in adults and the largest group of adult smokers. So that's probably something to point out there, but we'll... We'll just ignore that because like in everything, if we could just give something a shot, make it go away. Hey, everybody, let's jump on this. You said there are indications that the vaccines lose some effectiveness over time. So so you still believe that at some point the general public will need booster shots. Just the FDA advisory committee is, is not there yet. Jake, what, what I believe, and again, this is my opinion as a scientist and a public health person, that it is entirely conceivable and maybe likely that ultimately the proper regimen for optimal protection might actually entail a third boost. That is entirely conceivable. Of course it will at some point in time. It is. Of course it is. Of course it is. Here's something, though, to think about. CDC, FDA, the Fauci's of the world, they're all giving different viewpoints they're all giving points that are that are ones over here the ones over there and then this is over here and then you said this but now you're flip-flopping on it take away the booster we're still trying to get people the first shot take away that imagine six months or a year from now trying to get people to re-up for something like this again imagine six months or a year from now trying to go through this whole thing again we're trying to get everybody the dosages the quote-unquote they need Because they'll look back and say, you guys lied to us. Wasn't what it, you were saying it's going to be. You 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 flip-flopped on numerous occasions, and I was all about this, and I was fine getting the shot originally, but I don't know if I really need it. I'm going to treat it kind of like the flu. You watch. 
getting people to go through the next round is going to be tough, if not tougher, than getting some to go through the first round. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Nightmare, chaos, craziness, Del Rio, Texas, 35,000 people. 35,000 people live in Del Rio, Texas. 35,000. And what are they seeing? They're seeing an absolute crazy, chaotic group of, of, of people that have come over here in a chaotic situation. Are they bad people? No, they're human beings. They're human beings that live in a country, Haiti, that is an absolute nightmare. That is an absolute nightmare. They've had a presidential assassin, and then they had another massive 7.2 earthquake. There is no hope, so they've made a perilous journey that for many has taken anywhere between six to eight weeks and just every penny they had to get to the United States. Crossing through Central America, Mexico, just insane. All that being said, we can't have 10, 12, 15,000 people living under a bridge in a small town in Texas waiting for something. We cannot have this. It is a, it, it's a, an immigration system that is completely broken. And I have no idea what Biden and them are going to do. The Biden administration expects to transfer 3,000 of the migrants away from the bridge by the end of today, saying they'll use a Trump-era health policy which permitted the expulsion of migrants without allowing them to seek asylum. And that's what a lot of them are going to do. The problem for some of this is the way they're talking about how you apply for asylum. It's on a case-by-case basis, but generally speaking, if you're a single adult... You're amenable to Title 42. You're amenable to immediate expulsion. If you're a family unit and three quarters of these people are family units, most likely they will be allowed to stay. So all that being said, you look around and you see what's happening in Del Rio, Texas. You see the fact that they're just walking over. Last week, did you see that that Fox News, they had their (laughs) they had their so they had their drone, right? So they were going around, and all of a sudden, the drone is being told, no, the, the, the FAA says you can't fly your drone here for a while, for the next two weeks. You're like, okay, because you don't want to point something out that's going on. But they've known about this. They've known this was coming. We've been talking about 200,000 people last month. So this is what I heard for months. Oh, when the summer comes, you watch what happens. It's done it all the time. The summer came. The heat, the nastiness of of that desert, the perilous journey becomes even more perilous because you've got to deal now not only with coyotes, not only with with the, the cartels and human smugglers, you're also dealing with Mother Nature. And instead, it ramped up. Instead, it got worse. And now we're in a situation where you look around and you think to yourself, what in God's name is going on? This is not something where you're looking out there going, it's just a number. We don't really see it. This is 10, 12, 15,000, depending on what, what source you're looking at, of people underneath a bridge on our side of the border who walked across. And the administration is, you know, eh, got other things going on. Well, if you're worried about the coronavirus, you should be worried about this. If you're worried about the coronavirus, you should be worried about what's going on here. If you're going to use Title 42, which essentially says we can send you back immediately because of the pandemic, then you should be worried about this. You should worry about the health of these people. You should be worried about them getting out into a community where they don't know anybody. They have limited, if no, resources. And in some of these communities, they are already skeptical of governments. So the last thing they want to do is allow somebody to give them a shot. But you keep doing what you're doing because that seems to be working. And if that is, maybe he's getting paid. I don't know. I'm joking, of course. But I was going to say, maybe he's getting like, eh, you know what, for every one that comes in, I had a buck. (laughs) Right. Microtransaction. What an absolute blankety blank is the best way to describe it 
and they knew it was coming. This was a situation that DHS knew was coming. Um, they were warned about this in June. They were warned that they needed to set up a, a temporary outdoor processing site, um, like what there is in McAllen. They didn't do it, and because of that, that's why this has exploded. And so Border Patrol agents are extremely frustrated. Yeah. McAllen out there, and you got you got my buddy Sergio out there, KURV. What's up, Sergio? Uh, like I said, Brandon Judge, who is kind of the spokesperson now for you know, the Border Patrol and all that, he has taken us out there on a couple occasions. And I will tell you, it was so easy to cross. And seeing all the things that are going on, seeing everything that's happening now, the fact that we're even continuing to talk about this without any real opportunity for solutions, and they were dealt a blow last night because they thought in their $3.5 trillion human infrastructure plan and by the way human infrastructure i thought was one of those things where it's like oh you're gonna help kids go to school and and help parents pay for daycare i didn't think he was gonna hey we're gonna we're gonna allow a bunch of people to come here and essentially we'll let them hold the bridge up nightmare nothing hey where's the uh where's the czar of the uh immigration where's that where's she at that's the vice president 323-538-2423. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. My dog Doodle is crazy now. It's so funny watching him get fed Rough Greens. So if you guys know what it is, canine Vitasmart from Rough Greens. It's got vitamins, minerals, vegetables, probiotics, all this amazing stuff. It's a supplement that goes on top of your dog's food. Watch him get excited to eat the food with the rough greens on its layers he goes in circles he kind of does this like back and forth back and forth like front legs back legs front legs but it's hilarious he scoops it up he's happier and healthier than ever if you're looking at yourself and saying to yourself self i want to keep my dogs healthy i want to keep my dogs happy i want to keep my dog and their life growing every single day how do i do it it's little things like this rough green is incredible give it to your dogs try it right now they're going to send you a bag for free all you have to do is cover the cost of shipping. It's like eight bucks. Ruffgreens.com slash Chad. Ruffgreens.com slash Chad. Try it before you buy it. Or call 833 My Dog 77. 833 My Dog 77. Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. What's happening? This year's Emmys were in person. Most of the nominees and guests gathered in downtown Los Angeles as opposed to last year's mostly virtual show, but not everyone felt comfortable. Let me start by saying there is way too many of us in this little room. Presenter Seth Rogen with a string of jokes about how he thought the show was supposed to be outside, not as it was in a big tent. They lied to us. Everyone there was tested and vaccinated. This is insane. I went from wiping my groceries to having Paul Bettany sneeze in my face. Ah. What was the big winner last night in the Emmys? First of all, didn't watch, which is phenomenal. Secondly, and uh, uh, streaming. Streaming crushed everything last night. Streaming was just Apple with Ted Lasso. That was the win. You look over and you see the Gant, you know, uh, uh, you, you had, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at like the crown crushed it. You had the chess movie. TV show that crushed it. You had so many of the streaming shows that just beat out because they're better. That's it. The constraints of the things like television comparatively to what you can do with Apple, with Netflix, with Amazon, with Hulu, but now with Paramount Plus and Disney, you, you can't compete. You got 22 minutes here. And I think what you'll see is they'll start changing some of the the rules. They'll have streaming instead of versus everything. Here's what didn't win last night. (laughs) When the Emmy nominations were announced in July, the TV Academy was applauded for having the most diverse acting nominations in history. But that didn't translate into win Sunday night. Twelve acting categories, no winners of color. The Crown dominated all four drama acting categories. Ted Lasso, three of the four comedy categories, with Hack star Gene Smart winning Best Comedy Actress. In the limited series category, it was almost all stars of Mayor of Easttown. Among those, some thought had a chance but didn't win. I May Destroy You's Michaela Cole, Lovecraft Country's Michael K. Williams, and Pose's MJ Rodriguez, who would have been the first transgender star to win a lead acting award. Diversity didn't win. Why? I... 
Don't know. I've seen none of those shows. Oddly enough, I've not seen Ted Lasso. I keep saying I'm going to see it, but then I don't see it because I just don't have the time. <laughs> and I'm like, and the other thing is I don't want to spend any more money. on. I've bought and so like cut, cut the cord. Well, I didn't really cut the cord. I added to it because I have the dish because I watch football weekend, which is what I did, which is phenomenal. So and it's what I love to do on the weekends, watching golf, doing all my stuff. In saying all of that, then you got like well, Disney Plus, and you got a Hulu for this, and 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 I got that for, for Jack, and then I had to get Peacock because NBC Sports is going to keep the Golf Channel, but the rest of it's going to head over to Peacock, so I can watch the Premier League. Next thing you know, you look up and you got every single thing, and you're like, "What is going on?" But I've not got Apple just because I don't need something else. Got to cut something first. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. By the way, I had an awful weekend. Six for six in my picks. Got the Steelers wrong. Got the Jags wrong. The Saints wrong. Seahawks, Chargers, Chiefs. Tonight I got the Packers against the Lions. But how about Tom Brady? Joking about playing to 50. Best start of his career. Think about that for a second. Best start of his career. Threw five touchdowns yesterday. Woo! Jeff Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 600 members of the Customs and Border Patrol being backed up by 1,000 Texas state troopers. Never seen a scene like this. We talked to Border Patrol officials who say, yes, we've seen all types of incidents play out here at the Texas border, but they have never seen anything like this. This community of Del Rio, a very small, tight-knit community here, says it is overwhelmed. Yeah, overwhelmed. 35,000 people in little Del Rio. 35,000 people. You know, it's funny, last week uh, I kept telling everybody, watch what's going on there. Watch what's going on there. I have friends at the Border Patrol. Why is that? Because, A, I live in a place that is nothing but Border Patrol. I am halfway between Tucson and Phoenix. My, most of my neighborhood is Border Patrol. Good majority. Because right there, is one of the headquarters so you have a lot of people in and around the area i live that work in some capacity for the border patrol and they've known about this for a while last month two hundred thousand people two hundred thousand administration is very quiet very little on the news and the funny thing is the people that push back on me they're like yeah you're lying it's not that many people and i'm like yes there is no these people are all lying they're all a bunch of white supremacists no it's ridiculous this is an absolute nightmare the del rio mayor happens to be it's got to be a super right winger maybe on the left saying that at the current rate patrol is unfortunately ex- is strained to its limit beyond limit now the local mayor a democrat uh, pleading for the biden administration to boost resources saying that at the current rate it will take weeks to process these migrants and signs they're having to settle in are visible from the air a makeshift camp is going up and the mayor says at least one woman has given birth Most of the migrants will be expelled or placed in removal proceedings, say federal authorities, who also say more resources are coming. Yeah, more resources are coming. But how did it get to this point? How did it get to this point? Well, first of all, what are you dealing with? You're dealing with a group of people, mostly Haitians, some South Americans in there, who are escaping a nation that is the poorest in the Western Hemisphere, one of the poorest in the world that has had their president assassinated and now is trying to make some sort of of comeback from yet another massive earthquake. But you're also dealing with a border that has very little protection. 
getting across the border is easy. It's getting to the border for these people that's been tough. Six, eight weeks, a perilous journey through unforgiving land at an unforgiving time of year where the heat is unbearable. As you're making that journey, you're dealing with coyotes, cartel members, human traffickers, criminals and thieves that are just there to do anything they possibly can to rob these people blind, hurt them, whatever it is. We have an absolute nightmare in Texas. Very little about it on the news this weekend, minus a few things. They were super focused on what was going on at the Capitol, right? Because they were going to go out there and get the justice for the January 6th people. There was like 10 people there. It was a joke. I don't know how many people were there. It wasn't a lot. I know that the camera people outnumbered the protesters, and the 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 protesters of the protesters outnumbered the protesters, if that makes sense. On top of all of this, we have an issue with COVID. The concern is the spread of, of COVID and uh, and how that affects. Um... This group has asked if they're vaccinated against COVID. About half the adults raise their hands, some holding proof they got the shots. All this is the Department of Homeland Security faces a series of challenges, including more than 200,000 migrant encounters last month. The abrupt resignation of two top DHS officials, the Afghan resettlement effort, and now this sudden spike of migrants in Del Rio. These people are desperate, they're determined, and they're determined to get here. Has a humanitarian crisis unfolding at the southern border of the United States. Yes. Not bad people, human beings. Human beings that any one of us in their position would do the same thing for themselves and their family. Any one of us in those positions would 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 get the hell out of of that place that is in a mess and it's been a mess since i was a child haiti was a mess when i was a kid growing up they were always doing church trips to you know to, to you know mission trips to haiti because it was such a mess it has been a mess forever but at some point we have to ask ourselves what are we doing on the border nothing I said on that second debate, I heard him say he wants a pathway to citizenship for 11 million people. That rang the dinner bell. Everybody came. They figured if they could get here, they're going to get some sort of amnesty. And guess what? They could scream it's not open borders. It's open borders. This cannot go on. At some point, you got to say, all right, we got to stop this. Now, you can play the lip service all you want say, we're telling people not to come here. They're not believing you. They're not. They're sending some of these people home, but some of them aren't, because as long as there's somewhat intact family, they're going to be allowed to stay and apply for amnesty. Asylum. I mean, asylum. Frustrating. It is frustrating. Also, here's something I threw out. Based on these people, I tell you what, we have all these jobs that are unfilled. Bet you we got a bunch of employees here. Who's with me on that? Bet you we got a ton of employees here. They'll be they'll be very happy to go to work. They'll be very happy, I'm sure, to have the opportunity to work. <laughs> Maybe we should do a swap. <laughs> These people don't want to work. We're gonna send them over there because they're all about doing stuff and they want, you know, to help people. This will be great. You guys want to work. Have at it. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Still no signs of the one that is going to fix the border. Still waiting. Still waiting for those signs. You know I'm talking about, Vice President Harris. Waiting. Let's see if we can hear. Her. Nope. It's quiet. Very quiet. The company says the trial gave more than 2,200 children a dose one-third the amount given to adults and found that it produced minimal side effects similar to adults and older children. And Pfizer says the results, which haven't been peer-reviewed, show the antibody response at that dose in children was at least as strong as the full adult dose in patients 16 to 25. 5 to 11 could be next in getting the the shot. That's the best way to call it it's the shot when will that happen dr fauci when do you think there will be a vaccine for children 
It will certainly be this fall, as we get into October, we'll be able to see the vaccines for children get enough data to be presented for safety and immunogenicity. Sometime in the mid to late fall, we will be seeing enough data from the children from 11 down to 5 to be able to make a decision to vaccinate them. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if that's going to happen when exactly that's going to happen. We're also going to see, I think there's going to be a lot more pushback from some parents, even parents. Look, I'm all, I've said this and I'll continue to say this. I am pro the shot. I am very much pro the shot. I think you do your research, you do your homework, you do as much as you possibly can. You talk to somebody you trust, not just living in the world of disinformation and insanity, but find people that you trust when it comes to the vaccine or medical issues, doctor, nurse practitioner, things like you, you, you talk to people that, that you can go to. Not the Internet, because we know what you can get on the Internet. All that being said, I'm more pro-freedom. And that's something that gets lost in a lot of this stuff. Speaking of disinformation, this is a perfect example of people who get pissed off about the vaccine, all the information on Facebook. And let's 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 we go back and remind everybody misinformation, disinformation, two different things. Misinformation is you've got some of the information and you run with it. It's not the whole thing. And but you think it's right. You're 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 not putting something out there that you think is wrong. Disinformation are people that solely put things out there that they know is a lie. Okay, so I want to define the term difference in opinion. I think the best way to do that is to use an example. For example, if I say I like chicken wings and you say I don't like chicken wings, that's a difference in opinion. If I say chicken wings are made from chickens, you say no, chicken wings are made from horse meat. That is not a difference in opinion. You are just factually incorrect. Now stay with me here. Fun fact, the psychiatric definition of delusion or to be delusional is a false belief that cannot be corrected by logic. So this belief in your brain, which is wrong, consistently persist in your head despite being proven wrong multiple times and by the way you could probably make chicken wings out of anything i think we know that (laughs) they are chicken wings but we all kind of know that like they're not buffalo wings what are they made of (laughs) anybody because i've seen lots of buffalo hey not one of them got a wing um, and this video is specifically for the people in my hometown that continue to post misinformation on Facebook about a fully tested and FDA approved vaccine. And I'm not arguing about whether or not you got the vaccine or you didn't. That's wholeheartedly 100% your choice. I just wanted to let you know that what you and I have is not a difference in opinion. You're just delusional. In some cases, he's absolutely right. In some cases, again, uh, the data. It's like it's like I always tell everybody the interpretation of the law. It's the interpretation of the law. You see what's going on with the, with the likes of uh, uh, what's happening, in, you know, at the Supreme Court level. The the Constitution's right there. There's an interpretation. This group over here interprets it this way. This group over here interprets it this way. And and you know, but for the data, it, it's mostly 100 percent true. But then if you dig deeper down, you'll find out that there are certain things that are a little bit different. Go back to the whole booster shot. So much of that was based on an Israeli study of over 65 for a third shot. Those kind of things where, yes, they advise that, but not for everybody. Which, by the way, the FDA on Friday said, you know what? We're going to do the same thing. You're over 65. you got compromised immune system. Get a booster shot. If you're under 65 and you're pretty good health uh, and you've got the shot, don't worry about it. At least not right now. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, tweet at us, text the program. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. You will love it. I give it to my dogs every single day. Sprinkle on top of the dog's food. It is kind of like, I would say it's kind of a little little pinch of spice. It's got vitamins, minerals, vegetables, probiotics, omega-3, 6, 9, digestive enzymes. What that does for them is it gives them all the nutrients that their dog's food may have, some of them. The problem is your dog's food has a is is shelf stable means it's meant to live on a shelf for a very long period of time this brings all that stuff out and gives them more it's helped my dog with his his fur because he had issues with you know uh, allergies some hot spots it's helped my dog with his hips because he had arthritic hips and it's just given him more energy he's happier and healthier than he's ever been and we started our puppies on it and i would never ever think about taking them off it and they love the taste Get your Rough Greens now. It's great for your pups. 
ruffgreens.com slash Chad. Whether your dog's older and bigger or smaller, you, they'll show exactly how you, you give it to them based on their weight. They will love it. Roughgreens.com slash Chad. You pay nothing. You just cover the cost of shipping. Or call 833-MY-DOG-77. 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, liftoff. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let us take a peek, shall we? Find out what's trending on the old interwebs over the weekend. Where should we start? Let's start with uh, Google. iOS 15 release date. Trending right now. Biggest one today. Yesterday, Emmys, Dallas Cowboys, biggest trenders. Well over 2 million plus. Cowboys got a big win yesterday at the uh, SoFi Museum and Stadium. It's probably the best way to cry. And Village. If you've never seen it, it is the stadium in which the Rams and the Chargers share uh, and it is insane. Ravens, great game last night. Lamar Jackson really played well, as did all the Ravens. Got a got a win over Patrick Mahomes. Still looks he's just a freak. He is a freak. Guy is just amazing. Lots of football stuff. The La Palma volcano. Rivers are flowing. Towards villages as a Spanish volcano has erupted. Crazy Mother Nature. As we always say, kids, nature will mess you up. And it is showing at any given time to shake it out. It'll do what it does. Head on over to Twitter. It's very interesting when you go and look at Twitter. You have a lot of stuff. Chris Rock is asking people, begging them, go get the vaccine. He is tested positive for a... COVID-19 and says it's no joke. You got the Emmys. Jason Sudeikis last night, big win. Ted Lasso. Across the board, they kind of won. Anthony Johnson, comedian, actor, passed away, age 55. Chuck Todd is getting pushback because, you know, he kind of has called out the administration for, I don't know, whatever is going on with them which I don't know we're really sure what's going on with them at any given time. They're kind of all over the place. And they have been on numerous occasions. They have flip-flopped. They have backed away. They have ignored the credibility, as he has put it, has been, uh, well, it's not been very good. It's not been very good at all. And, you know, we could sit here and play this game about you know, oh, well, you know, because this is what I hear now. It's tr- Trump's not in charge anymore. Trump's not there. You know who's there? Biden. Well, look, I think he's got a, a pretty big uh, credibility crisis on his hands because all of these problems in some ways showed up after he said something basically the exact opposite. Afghanistan withdrawal wasn't going to be messy. This wasn't going to look like Saigon. Uh, the booster shots, he came out and he essentially said that eight months and even indicated maybe we should start it as soon as five months. Now we're not sure if anybody under 65 is going to get a booster. Yeah, just lots from immigration to the booster, to Afghanistan, to inflation, and we're going to talk about inflation. He's got issues. There's things he can do, some things he's not going to be able to do, but he better start being a little bit more vocal about some of this stuff and moving us in a way where we feel comfortable because, quite frankly, a lot of people are frustrated. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show.
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. You know, you talk about this tribalism. I don't know if this is tribalism, but I was looking at the pictures from the Met Gala, you know, and we're going to get to AOC. She wore tax the rich on her dress. But I noticed something that I've seen having been out at a few parties since the pandemic began, and that is the people going to the party don't wear masks, but the servers wear masks. Um, I mean, that just there's something about this that's not liberal to me. I, I mean, these are the liberal swells of the world. If we're all vaccinated, and um, do the germs know who the good people are? No. Oh, so true. Some of the, you know what it reminded me of last week watching some of it was the, the Hunger Games. <laughs> Bring us people for your tribute. It just felt like that. It's crazy. It is. Watch, and they're, they're thinking, well, people don't have to wear masks outside, but inside. No, they didn't. I saw tons of them. Well, they're all vaccinated. Again, last week, the, uh, uh, you had the, just the other day, you had the marathon, San Francisco. If you're running in the marathon, the smart thing to do is to wear a mask. Why? God only knows. Second thing, Mayor London Breed out at a club Thursday night partying, no mask, when it's very much a thing that you have to do when you're indoors. Do as I say, not as I do. What's it going to look like a year from now? This, you guys should find hilarious. Okay, AIDS vaccine passport. I'm going to need to see an allergy test, Lyme disease, chicken pox, H1N1, rabies tag, H1N2. All right, proof of the herpes vaccine. And what about the herpes booster? I literally got it like 10 minutes ago. Hand, foot, and mouth disease, H1N5, prostate exam, whooping cough, tetanus, negative test for the black plague, tetanus booster? I don't have it. I'll give it to you now. I'm going to need your Netflix password. Oh, he's just getting started. So this is them a year from now where we're going. Remember, we're two weeks to flatten the curve, then crush the curve, then stop this. Then I, I don't even know where we're at in some parts of the country at this point in time. Proof of political party, proof of diversity. Are you serious? We already have two white guys in there, okay? That's our limit. Okay, uh, I'm Jewish. What do you think this is, 2021? You're going to have to be way more oppressed than that to get in here. You got like a 23 me test results? Yes, yes. 50% Ashkenazi Jew. 0.000027 Native American. Why didn't you just tell me that? You got an anti-racist card? All right, now I just got to check your white guilt score. 9.7. Wow, not bad, man. <laughs> so true. 9.7 on your 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 guilt, huh? How about that? How guilty are you? Oh, very guilty. Congratulations on that. Ten men have babies. Yes. Do all lives matter? Yeah, no. How many statues have you toppled this month? Nine. Do you support the police? No. Are all Trump supporters racist? Yes. How many people have you canceled this month? 18, 19, including my grandmother. Racist? No, she still likes Louis C.K. Ooh. Ever been me too? No. Me three? No. Me four? No. Me seven? I need proof of a black friend. Okay, how many pronouns are there? 92,627. All right, and finally, I need you to recite the full sexuality acronym. Uh, L G B T Q I A O N. And it's funny because when they take the camera back, and I post it on Twitter, when they take the camera back and <laughs> he's just trying to go into the laundromat to get his laundry. That's all he's trying to do. Welcome to a year from now. It's not going to happen. It isn't. We're, I think, at a place where, you know, people are living their lives. And they are. And the battle's going on with, with for, you know, what's funny is I think for a lot of people there's a battle going on that a group of other people are just, we're not, we're not doing it. We're not fighting. We're just going to live our lives. And and I'm all about that. If you believe in the in, in the shot, if you think the shot works, don't worry about whether or not the person next to you has it. Don't. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Wear two masks. Wear five. If you don't want to leave your house, don't leave your house. By the way, people out there who aren't vaccinated and think this thing's a hoax for whatever reason, if they ask you to wear a mask into a store or a place of employment, whatever it is, you do that because that's what they've asked you to do. And the rest of us should just get on with our lives. We can't do that. Yes, we can. And we should. That's the way we should live our lives. Eh, talking about another lockdown in, in, in New Zealand and the lockdown that's going on in Australia. It, it's nuts. What in God's name are these people doing? I mean, it's it's crazy. This is, and by the way, it's a lockdown. Some of these places. It's a lockdown. 
because their goal is to get to zero. It's never going to happen. It's just not. It's not happening. If your goal is to get to zero for a, a, a period of time, unless your goal is to get to zero, never let anybody out of their house for months and months and months. Do not allow anybody in your country. Maybe you got a chance. Maybe. But the reality is, probably not. <laughs> probably not. It's endemic, not pandemic. It's not going anywhere. And some of the insanity that people are pushing out there, it just boggles my mind. I think we have to stop coddling people when it comes to this and the vaccine saying, oh, you can't shame them. You can't call them stupid. You can't call them silly. Yes, they are. The people who are not getting vaccines, who are believing the lies on the Internet instead of science, it's time to start shaming them. What else? Or leave them behind. They're fine with that. Do you think shaming's really going to work? Is that is that is that your is that your th- is that your go to? You're going to shame? Oh yeah, it's fine. Go ahead. But if your goal is to try to get them educated, if you will, on the shot, if your goal is to try to have a conversation with them, insulting them isn't going to do it. That right there last week was, uh, as, as we like to put it, sour lemon. People are pissed. People are angry. I've got a couple friends who are very progressive. <laughs> and they're like, that's not going to work. That's the dumbest thing I've heard. Well, it's flamethrowing. It's what you do. I want to talk about Don Lemon for a second. Don Lemon thought that that Malaysia airplane was sucked up by a black hole. Don Lemon <laughs> thought a woman being allegedly raped by Bill Cosby could have stopped it by biting his penis. Don Lemon's an idiot. And Don Lemon is in no position to be lecturing anyone. Megan Kelly. <laughs> yeah. The black hole thing is pretty sweet. Nor is Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo decided to dismiss all of the accusers against his brother, whose claims were backed up and verified by independent witnesses as part of, quote, cancel culture. He didn't give a shit about any anything his brother had done and is in no position to lecture us. Don Lemon is credibly accused of shoving his hands down, fondling his own and then rubbing his hands along the face of a complete stranger in a bar witnessed by a bartender who is independent, not connected to either man. Okay, there's a lawsuit about it right now. Lemon denies it. What? Yeah. No, it's it makes me laugh, though. Like Megan Kelly's going after it because you're calling people idiots. Look, are there people out there who they're not looking at data and science? They're not looking about the efficacy of whether or not this thing actually works. They're looking at crazy memes and stuff like that. Yes, there's no doubt about that. By the way, those people. <laughs> I don't even know what to say at that point in time. Just like last week, we talked about the people on the left who believe that it's like 40% of them believe that, you know, a good majority of people who get this go straight to the hospital. And over 50 plus percent think this thing's 10 times more deadlier than it really is. So both sides have their idiots that espouse and spout craziness. But when you're sitting there thinking, like to me, if somebody asks me and they want to have a conversation about it, I'll have a conversation about it. Did you take it? Yes, I did. What side effects did you have? None. None. What about, no, I didn't have anything. I wasn't sick for 12 hours and have sore body or any of that stuff. Uh, I think a lot of it was, you know, psychosomatic for a lot of people. Have a conversation with somebody rather than insult them. Both sides don't like doing that. Because it's easier to insult because it makes for better conversation on the interwebs. I don't want to hear from Don Lemon on morals, on stupidity, which he is an expert on. I don't want to hear from him at all. And this is a pattern for him. Yes, you're right. It's important that we see them say it so that we know what they really think about half the country. But this is not it's not just Don Lemon. It's not just Chris Cuomo. It's in the so-called elite media who are disturbingly in control of popular thinking. Yeah. And a lot of that is spot on. They're disturbingly in control. And elite me, I call it the establishment media that over the weekend covered very little of what's going on in Del Rio, Texas. That over the weekend covered very little of, of what's actually happening there, how many people are there. They're just, there's the narratives. And we talk about it. It doesn't matter what it is. Or if, there's, if, there's a, if, if today a guy 
goes out and he shoots up a whatever, a mall. Probably be the only one in the mall. People are like, what's a mall? Exactly. But still. And then he happens to be black or it happens to be a, a woman. And people are like, mm, be quiet. You'd be very quiet. Somebody shoots up a baby shower. A bunch of people injured and some people killed, but it's in Chicago. No, it's just gang violence. It's no damn. It's there's just certain things. And you know, it's it should drive you crazy. It's about what you don't see that you have to really pay attention to. Like when it comes to volcanoes, earthquakes, tornadoes massive disasters things like that i'll watch you know everything from cnn to this that you know uh, i don't really watch fox i don't really watch any of them really to be honest with you but for just going straight there and going all right what what what's the who what when how and why because you're not going to turn the the la palma volcano in spain into into something insane at least you shouldn't okay we can watch that because i know what i'm getting but when it comes to so many other things i don't know what is or isn't said you want to know i know because i've worked in newsrooms my whole life worked around people my whole life i've been told on occasions don't say this don't say that which by the way i'm gonna say it if it's true not because it fits a narrative it's just frustrating and then you get somebody like that don lemon's going out you're, you're calling everybody idiots some of them some of them are idiots absolutely some of them are they're ignorant in a lot of things they're in an echo chamber and you insulting them is only going to make them dig their heels in. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Raycon, best year buds around. Love my Raycons this weekend. Relaxed. Did a little work. Had my Raycons on. Went for some walks. Had my Raycons on. Love my Raycons. Incredible. The comfort is awesome. If you're looking for an amazing pair of earbuds, if you're thinking to yourself, I work out a lot, Chad, how do they? When I play soccer and run around them, they're great. When I play golf, they're great. The talk time is amazing. And by the way, you get this amazing charging case. And what I love is, because sometimes I'll go out and golf, and I may be out there, uh, especially this time of year, it's a little bit warmer, and kind of have the course to myself at times, where I'm going to go, you know what, I might play 27 or 36 holes. And I take my charging case with it, throw it in there my case is already charged up it gives me more charge for my earbuds you can get four full charges with that you will love these the price starts under 70 bucks different colors the noise isolating fit no stems no wires get your raycons now best earbuds around buy raycon.com slash chad buy raycon.com slash chad use that save an extra 15 percent buy raycon.com slash chad chad benson show Get over it. It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. Watched a lot of football this weekend. I love college football. Some about college football. You watch the NFL games, and I love watching the NFL. But college football is amazing. You had two huge games this weekend uh, that just were awesome. You had the whiteout at Penn State against Auburn, right? You had 107,000 people, give or take, just great to watch. Then you have one of the best venues in all of college sports, which is watching, you know, there's Florida, the Gators, you know, welcome to the swamp. One of the things they do now is, well, they sing a little something, a little something, something, a little Tom Petty. And I love the traditions, you know, Camp Randall, start of the fourth quarter. Last weekend, not this past week, the weekend before last, they they showed the full go with that, which in Wisconsin in the fourth quarter, uh, they play jump around. This was pretty neat, though, and they've been doing this for a while uh, in Florida, singing Petty. If you know Tom Petty music, it touches you, your heart and your soul. Before he became a rock and roll icon, 
Tom Petty was born and raised in Gainesville, Florida. His ties to the community run deep, and legend has it, Petty worked at the University of Florida as a groundskeeper. It's always talked about that he was a groundskeeper here at UL. He definitely left a mark on this town, and everybody takes pride in him. I mean, he's a legend. Everything and everywhere you go around here has some connection to Tom Petty. He influences the whole community. He brings the spirit here to the town. Yeah. And they get excited after he died. A little new tradition was born, something, something. Fans get involved. And you heard them. They're going crazy. It's great. You got 60, 70, 80,000 people all singing in unison. It is very much like the only thing you'll get close to as a, in a European soccer game is the college. There's very few NFL teams that can replicate what happens in college. After a legendary career spanning more than four decades, Petty died suddenly on October 2nd, 2017, one week after his final concert. Five days later, the Florida Gators honored him by playing I Won't Back Down at the start of the fourth quarter. And with it began a new tradition in the swamp. I just love it. I love I love college. I watched a ton of it this weekend. It was just it was so just fun to watch. And they get into it because every game in college football, see, you got 17 games now in the NFL. You've got more playoff opportunity. It's gonna be awesome. College football for some of these big teams, these big rivalries. It's it. You lose one game, two games. Heck, you might even win. Ohio State and Clemson won this weekend and they fell in the polls because their win wasn't good enough. It didn't look good. You didn't win by 80. So I just, I love it. I love it. And it was awesome. It was neat to see. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. White House making news for something. Traveling, but not illegal immigration. Starting in early November, foreign nationals flying to the United States will be required to be fully vaccinated and they must show proof of that vaccination prior to boarding a U.S. bound plane. Foreigners coming into the U.S. will be required to take a COVID-19 test within three days prior to departure and show proof of a negative test. The Trump administration imposed travel restrictions in the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic and the Biden administration kept them in place despite major pushback from European allies and increasing vaccination rates in europe yeah they remember china too and everybody's like he's a racist he's all these things <sighs> so if you're vaccinated now and you're flying from europe and you've got a card you can show it you can come here now who knows what it'll look like tomorrow next week two weeks from now month from now we just don't know 323-538-2423 at chad benson shows your twitter tweet at us text the program chad benson show This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts independent life this is chad benson after the fda gives its uh, uh, approval which it did now next the advisory committee for the cdc is to, is supposed to meet middle of this week and once they make the recommendation which i expect they they will then the vulnerable people or those at high risk for for contracting covid19 can go out and get their booster that's right friday they said hey you people out there we're excited about getting a third shot. <laughs> Unless you're compromised as far as immunity goes, you've got comorbidities to put you at risk. Uh, you're over the age of 65, 60, 65. You've, you, you, you're, your immune system isn't as strong as somebody younger. Then outside of that, you guys, you're going to have to wait. No! What do you mean? Why? I want 500 shots. 
<laughs> see people go in and they're lying and they're like, it's my first shot. <laughs> like, wow. What do you, what have you listened to that has terrified you? But Chad, this has killed uh, 400 quadrillion people. It's, it is nasty. We should not, this is not a joke, right? You treat it with respect, but you can't live in fear of it. But they were so excited to get the booster. They were so excited to get the booster. And then they were told, nah, the booster really isn't necessary. The booster isn't. So this week, the CDC will probably echo what the FDA said, at least for now. Doesn't mean it's going to be like this forever. You said there are indications that the vaccines lose some effectiveness over time. So, so you still believe that at some point the general public will need booster shots, just the FDA advisory committee is, is not there yet? Jake, what, what I believe, and again, this is my opinion as a scientist and a public health person, that it is entirely conceivable and maybe likely that ultimately the proper regimen for optimal protection might actually entail a third boost. That is entirely conceivable. Here's my opinion, not a doctor or a scientist, but understanding human nature and that this is very much somewhat of a flu-like endemic, not pandemic, singular thing that we're getting a shot for. It's you're probably going to need one once a year until they figure out how to make sure that this thing stays away. Maybe it's once every two years. Maybe it's once every three years. That'll happen at some point in time. I know Moderna right now is working on what we call the Flovid. The flu shot and a COVID shot. And hopefully it's a one once a year things and they'll go from there. It will. If you're in a situation where you are having issues with immunity anyways take away this yeah then the third booster might help you if you're in a situation where you're older then yeah this probably for you at this point in time if you're 40 years old and in pretty darn good health and you got your boost you got your shots seven months ago yeah probably i And if you've got natural immunity on top of the shots or just natural immunity, we don't know. We don't know at this point. There's just a lot they don't know about. That will come over time. Now the next question is the kids. What about the kids? When are the kids going to get a shot? When is that going to happen? When? Pfizer announcing that its vaccine is safe and effective for children ages 5 through 11, and they will be asking the FDA for approval in the coming weeks. The announcement coming along with the first look at the company's trial data giving its vaccine to children. Yep, so we're looking uh, probably, I would say in the next five to six weeks, maybe eight weeks. I think at some point in time that's going to be an option. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how people are going to take that. It is one thing when you're an adult and you're making a decision like this. It is another thing for people to make the decision for their child. And remember, when we look at stuff like people say, well, you take the, you know, you'll take the uh, polio. I said, first of all, <laughs> I didn't take anything. It wasn't like I was like, hey, you newborn, like, you know, give me two of those. I'll take one of those. You got it. But the track record was there, right? We don't have polio anymore. We've eradicated a numerous amount of things that once bothered us and still bother parts of the world. But for a lot of people, I think they'll take a step back and say, well, hold on. I, want, I like to see this thing a little bit more when it comes to kids. How much are you giving kids? And when you look at the numbers when it comes to children, it's pretty darn good. It is. As far as, you know, the flu, people say, well, more people have died. From, not, not even close. Not even close. Remember, the flu is a season. We're tracking this thing going on 19 months now. Continuously. Maybe a bit of natural immunity. All of my kids have had it. My stepkids, everybody's had it. We're good. Everybody's fine. I told you my story with Jack. (laughs) Dad, I don't feel so good. 
Oh, man, you should probably rest. Yeah, I don't know if I'm sick. Yeah. I wonder what it is, man. I said, do you think it was the bag of Takis you ate last night? <laughs> or two? He's He waited like a day and a half for his only consumption of food, solid parenting, was Takis. Right? Takis, and they had fun. They got slushies. And it ran around. It was 110 degree heat. By 6 in the afternoon, he felt great. Most of the kids that I've, you know, friends of mine whose kids have had it, it was 12, 24, maybe 36 hours. If they even felt it at all. So I think there's a question to ask when it comes to to this that I think parents that are even vaccinated will think about. And with kids going back to school, plus we got the flu season in front, this is going to be interesting to see how this thing plays itself out. Are we going to start shutting down schools again for the flu? Is that going to happen? Is that going to be necessary? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. We will find out. I do know one thing. This is still very political. The battle is still very real. And we are still fighting over things that we shouldn't be fighting over. All that being said, this weekend, I was expecting all kinds of chaos, right? It was like the January 6th super, like, rally, right, that was supposed to take place in D.C., supposed to be massive, uh, except for the far part where there was nobody there. I didn't expect people to be there. I didn't. I mean, it was a small group of people. 700, they said. They were hoping to be there. There was maybe 350. The police totally outnumbered them. Uh, So did the camera people. It was an absolute, it was hilarious is what it was. It was hilarious. So that's what took place there. And, you know, Trump, they're still living off Trump. Case in point, the book that's out there from Woodward and what's his name? Costa or whatever. They've got this new book. Oh, my God, it's a new book. Talks about all this stuff. Trump is still a money-making machine for a ton of people. Based on our reporting, Chairman Milley did not believe President Trump wanted to go to war. But it was his assessment, his conclusion, based on intelligence and other briefings, that the Chinese were highly alarmed about what happened on January 6th. Well, we're highly alarmed by a lot of stuff that they have done. But it's a book. Man, he is still an industry. All you have to do was just be around the guy in the White House. And somebody was going to throw six, maybe seven figures, depending on how close you got to him. If I got close enough, they're going to give me some money. If I get close enough, they're going to hand me some cash. If I get close enough, there's an opportunity for me to make some money. There is. This is a national security crisis for the country bob woodward there it was look i still am of the belief that millie overstepped i'm still of the belief that you know if this would have been if 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 a general would have said this about obama general would have done this about right now if somebody would have came and said oh we're doing this uh based on the fact that we think that uh biden right now is incapable of of managing his duties and uh, sorry, where was the chain of command? How did this go? Who else was involved? You making some sort of unilateral action, which you are not a what, General Milley? You're not elected official. You're part of the military. You're the Joy Chiefs. You're supposed to advise and give advice. You're not supposed to do anything other than that. It is the civilians who run the military, not vice versa. You making phone calls. Were they unsecured lines? Were they secured lines? Was anything redacted? Probably not. Were you discussing certain things? We don't know. Those are things that we should be seeing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. We've got a lot to get to still. The border in crisis. And for those of you who think it's just not really that bad, it's bad. It's This is just a culmination of what is going on across the the border but this is this is a true snapshot and highlight of the ineptitude and quite frankly the ignoring of what's been taking place and still quite quite possibly being ignored to this day
because I haven't heard much out of it. All these people under a bridge, not a lot being said. I hear a lot of the, 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 the Biden administration coming out and saying, okay, we've, we've got a real crisis here. We've got a real issue here. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show's Twitter. You want to be Roman ready. So you go to GetRoman.com slash Chad. Now, what is Roman ready? You're going out. You like her. She likes you. All right. Or whatever. You're having fun. You think this could be the moment. Before Roman ready, it was. <laughs> after Roman ready, it's. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Rectal dysfunction. How about this? Free evaluation online. U.S. healthcare professional. License. Comfort and privacy of your own home. Get that confidence. The confidence you want confidence you need for that moment to rise to the occasion and you can all do it from the comfort of your home it's free it's discreet it's straightforward and convenient and if medication is appropriate it ships to you free with two-day shipping get started right now go to getroman.com slash chat complete an online visit take care of your ed without ever leaving your home so simple so easy and if prescribed 50 percent off your first month ED treatment. GetRomanReady.com slash Chad. GetRomanReady.com slash Chad. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this summer. Get Roman ready. GetRoman.com slash Chad. Save 50% on your first month ED treatment. Chad Benson Show. If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. Wake up. It's the Chad Benson Show. With police and federal agents searching for Brian Laundry just before 10 a.m. local time in Northport, Florida, a swarm of police moved in on the home of Brian Laundry's parents where he had been staying before he disappeared. His whereabouts are unknown right now. The FBI says it's executing a court-authorized search warrant of the home in the Gabby Petito investigation. A body believed to be Petito's was found near Grand Teton on Sunday. An official ID of the body is underway. Yeah, it's a it's a story that, well, the media is out there, but it's also a story that has all the intrigue, right? It's got all the intrigue, all of the 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 stuff. Couple going across country, RV trip, going super viral, trying to do their things. You got a you know, p- pretty young blonde girl, this guy, and they had some issues along the way, and that's been documented now with Utah police near Moab and and uh, them being pulled over, and that there was domestic dispute. In some cases, the, the, apparently, they were even thinking about charging her, and they talked about they had issues throughout the day. Then she disappears, her family get, can't get a hold of her, and he shows up at home without her. So you got this intrigue, the whole nine yards. And then they found a body. And then there was also apparently potentially a double homicide in and around a certain area throughout one of these things where they connected. I mean, these are all things that are being talked about. Now, of course, he has just kind of disappeared. His mother and father today were taken away uh, in a car. They have found a note, I guess, inside his vehicle. So he went into a nature preserve in 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 Florida. Is he going to kill himself? Is is he obviously he's? The, I don't think they're looking too hard for, you know. They're like, okay, we got a hundred guys and gals on this. Hundred days and them's. One of you is going to be over here looking for potentially the other killer. Potentially the other ninety nine. We're going to focus on this person of interest. Her dad, upset, as any father would be, over this. My gut tells me that something bad happened. And I am never, I'm never going to be able to hold my baby girl again. Yeah. But it's got all the intrigue of the 48 hours of the dateline, all of those things. It's got the intrigue of, of the you know, the backstory and to tell the story because to get something like this, yes, they're focusing on it. Yes, they're talking about it, but to get something like this, 
to, to capture the country, yeah, the media's got to be on board, but also there's got to be a story. You got to, It's not just about the who, what, when, how, and why. It's about all of the things, right? Because you know there's going to be sex and potentially drugs and, and potentially this and potentially there's all the things. We'll see what happens. It's going to be very interesting next couple of days. And, you know, people in and around the neighborhood talking about, you know, that – they have signs up telling the family to tell everybody where he is, make sure that he talks. And he may not be. You never know. I mean, if I had to put money on it, I'm going to go, well, that's that guy. But, again, in this country, you got to prove it. That's the thing. He gots to prove it. But until they prove it, he's just a person of interest. Probably the person of interest. But he's still just a person of interest. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. The encampment. We've never seen anything like this. This is completely and totally um, out of the norm of anything that we've ever seen. In Del Rio, we will talk about it straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Sky condition clear. Chad, a GPS helicopter 160 will be taken off from the north ramp. So all of these people just crossed? Yep. I mean, this is hundreds of people. Oh, it's not hundreds, it's thousands. Have you ever seen anything like this? Nothing. This is the far exceeds anything we've ever seen down here. We can see at least three Yes, mostly Haitians, mostly of the, not quite sure what's under the bridge slash overpass there in Del Rio, Texas. It's a city of about 35,000. Not quite sure how many people. I know it's not four. I know it's not six. Estimates, depending on where you're reading, who you're talking to. Anywhere between 10,000 and 16,000. Let's split the difference. Let's say it's 30, 13,500, give or take. That's a lot. It's a small city. It's funny, somebody who likes uh, likes to argue all the time. I don't know. I was wonder sometimes, like, why do you listen to the show if you can't stand it? But, you know, it's like, well, I called somebody because it's back and forth with you as, uh, you know, it's just I had to call somebody who's a good friend of mine on the, the, the Border Patrol, and they said it's more like 4,000. Well, all the other estimates, including other Border Patrol, including people I talk to at the Border Patrol, say it's closer to 13 to 16. But apparently you guys are the best of all. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Well, that's because your people are, are a bunch of Trump lovers. Right. That's not real. That's just a Trump love in town, is it? Saying that at the current rate, patrol is unfortunately ex- is strained to its limit, beyond limit now. The local mayor, a Democrat, pleading for the Biden administration to boost resources, saying that at the current rate, it will take weeks to process these migrants. And signs they're having to settle in are visible from the air. A makeshift camp is going up, and the mayor says at least one woman has given birth. Most of the migrants will be expelled or placed in removal proceedings, say federal authorities, who also say more resources are coming. Yeah. More resources are coming. The administration has been extremely quiet on this. Some of the migrants are being sent home. That's what we're hearing. Uh, but it is, you know, it's a humanitarian crisis, no doubt. According to the New York Times, Haitian officials were expressing dismay, asking the U.S. for a humanitarian moratorium on the deportations. 
But overnight, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas announcing 600 border agents are now heading to Texas. And Mayorkas tweeting, quote, we have sent a very clear message early on. In light of the fact that we're in the midst of a pandemic, that the border is not open and people should not take the perilous journey here. But they are. They are. Border Patrol's pissed, angry, frustrated. Border Patrol agents are extremely frustrated. Wonder why. Right now with the department because they knew, they they knew that this was coming and they did nothing to stop it. They did? They knew? Yes. From what people are saying, DHS knew this was happening. By the way, not a shocker. 200,000 people came across the border last month that there was encounters, meaning they were caught, they surrendered, whatever it was. 200,000. The numbers are through the roof. At the rate it's going now, it's going to be close to 2 million people crossing the border that they catch. When I speak to the Border Patrol, which, by the way, I live essentially right next to one of their headquarters. Uh, My entire neighborhood is pretty much Border Patrol in some way, shape, or form. They say anywhere between, I mean, they say they catch maybe a quarter of the people. Let's just say you double that. And they're lying. That put it at what? Close to 4 million people. That's insane. Biden rang the dinner bell, if you will. Ding, ding, ding. Pathway to citizenship. Pathway. They tried to sneak it into the bill. $3.5 trillion, the human infrastructure bill. But that got shot down. So that's not going to happen. But that is unsustainable. And they knew this, in particular, was coming. This was a situation that DHS knew was coming. Um, They were warned about this in June. They were warned that they needed to set up a a temporary outdoor processing site, um, like what there is in McAllen. They didn't do it, and because of that, that's why this has exploded. And so Border Patrol agents are extremely frustrated. Yeah, as they should be. As they should be. All that being said... Very quiet when it comes to this president. Very quiet. Then you have the other thing, COVID. So let's say you got 13,000, 14,000 people that are there. And if you think they're all being sent home, that isn't going to happen. I think we already know that. Part of it is depends on who you are and who you're with. It's on a case-by-case basis, but generally speaking, if you're a single adult... You're amenable to Title 42. You're amenable to immediate expulsion. If you're a family unit and three quarters of these people are family units, most likely they will be allowed to stay. And Title 42 was something that Trump put out there that we're in the middle of a pandemic. And if you come here and you cross the border, we're going to send you back because that's what we're doing. We're in the middle of a pandemic. That's not been happening. And how many of these people are vaccinated? How many of them are really vaccinated? If you're concerned about what's going on, think about the communities that are going to welcome people that may or may not be vaccinated. Communities that are going to be welcoming welcoming people that may or may not have this. And many communities out there are already people of color uh, in, in the Hispanic community. They're, they're, they're gun shy and taking this thing. Totally understandable. But... That being said, this is a tough ask for a lot of communities. Take away the coronavirus. We need to be welcoming. We need to be be the country that we were built upon. We need to absolutely have a heart, but understand that we're in the midst of a pandemic and also understand that we have got an administration that on this has been pretty useless. The concern is the spread of, of COVID and uh and how that affects. um... This group has asked if they're vaccinated against COVID. About half the adults raise their hands, some holding proof they got the shots. All this is the Department of Homeland Security faces a series of challenges, including more than 200,000 migrant encounters last month. The abrupt resignation of two top DHS officials, the Afghan resettlement effort, and now this sudden spike of migrants in Del Rio. These people are desperate, they're determined, and they're determined to get here. Has a humanitarian crisis unfolding at the southern border of the United States. And by the way, how many of them are really vaccinated? 
Haiti has about 17,000 fully vaccinated people, less than 0.2% of the country. So most of these people started their journey in, it's been six to eight weeks. So let's just say the 1st of July. They didn't start really rolling vaccines out until the middle of July, first week of August. So, yeah, the chances of, 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 of them being actually vaccinated, probably very small. And I do not hear the leadership anywhere talking about this. I do not hear them anywhere talking about any of this stuff. I do not hear them anywhere out there. I do not hear them. I do not hear her, the czar that was put in charge to somewhat fix the border, which, by the way, I don't I don't expect her to fix, but I do expect her to somewhat acknowledge the issues going on. It's been awfully quiet. It has been awfully quiet. Right now, he's got some issues. He has got immigration, disaster. Afghanistan, a disaster. There's a battle and fight going on right now with, with the coronavirus and the the people that won't take it versus apparently the people that have. So the good people and the bad people. All that being said, then you've got the other side of it. Stuff that isn't being talked about in the crazy land of the webs. But the everyday people, you and I going, man, I was at the store today. Stuff's expensive. If you've been inside of a supermarket like this one in the last six months, you know this to be true. Prices are climbing. But according to one of the largest grocery chains in the country, they will continue to rise over the rest of this year. Kroger says that their inflation will soon become customers' inflation in the coming months. As we've seen these prices climb at grocery stores across the country, they are expected to continue climbing. One of the biggest culprits is beef prices. Yep, beef prices through the roof. By the way, if you're thinking about, hey, I can't wait for us to get back to somewhat of a normal Thanksgiving, uh, get your turkey. It's possible to buy a fresh turkey 10 days in advance, keep it in the back left side of the fridge. That is the coldest part. With frozen turkeys, you will have more choices. And experts say frozen turkeys can be stored in your freezer for up to one year without losing quality. So in theory, if you want to start shopping now, you can. Yeah, get your turkeys now. Thanksgiving is, think about this. We're five and a half, six weeks away from Halloween. I went this weekend. We took the kids, went to the spirit store, bought a bunch of Halloween stuff because, ha, I love it. By the way, I'm wearing the coolest socks right now. They're short socks, but they're the coolest. Michael Myers. It's pretty sweet. Very, very cool. Got some new stuff. Got some more decorations to the house. My little one was absolutely having the blast of her life. She just, she loves scary things. It's the best thing in the world. But I will tell you, store was busy, but they said we don't have the stuff that we had last year. The stuff missing. I was talking to producer Anthony earlier today. Talking about he went to Trader Joe's. Talking, they, He was talking to some people there. Supply chain. Suez Canal, even if it gets to the point where it's ready to come and unload, you've got issues at the ports. Not enough longshoremen. It used to be like the gig. Not enough people to unload, get things from point A to point B. It's a real issue right now that we need to be addressing more and more about how dependent we are, not just on microchips and everything, but everything. There are things, and they're landing at this president's feet. And you can't tell me these these first eight months or so have been a rousing success, because they have not been. I want him to succeed. If you want your president to fail, that is un-American. In saying that, there are a few things he can do. Afghanistan is done and dusted. You make sure that you have all of the things that we need in that area to keep a watch on what potentially may happen. I think that's pretty much a given. Inflation? You guys say, well, it's only going to be temporary. Now it looks like it's going to be a little bit more than temporary. What are you doing when it comes to gas prices? What are you doing when it comes to oil? What are we doing in those kind of situations? Immigration, definitely you could do something about. And the coronavirus is a battle 
that has more to do with the culture and who we are and this 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 battle of culture than it does as much as it is this virus. But there are some things he can do. Right now, he's staying awfully quiet. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Let's find out how I did. My NFL picks this week. Was I good? Was I bad? Was I indifferent? We shall discuss. Chad Benson show. Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. The Emmys were last night. Happy to know I didn't watch any of them. The Queen's Gambit. It was a good night for a show about a strong woman. The Queen's Gambit winning Best Limited Series. Producer William Horberg making the acceptance speech for the chess drama. Patriarchy simply has no defense against our queens a strong empowering message but in praising star anya taylor joy what can i say you brought the sexy back to chess and the tweets flooded in accusing horberg of objectifying his star calling him cringy and gross a sour note on an otherwise celebratory moment (laughs) Uh, you can't escape it you just can't If you've said something 20 years ago and somewhere there's a video of it, the Internet, I get a uh, a text from my uncle this weekend, and it just says, the Internet never forgets. This is Biden talking about mandates. Lo, those many years ago when VHS and beta were really a hot thing. If we don't get one disease under control, you may find legislative bodies taking whole classes of people based upon propensity of conduct well, to say, we're going to put you in a certain category. We're going to demand mandatory testing for you. Ooh. The Internet doesn't forget. That guy last night. You just can't. I don't even know what to say anymore. It's just so the retro world, right? Like, you, if you say one thing, somebody comes for you. If you say something people don't like, they come for you. Being a snitch, now it's not a bad thing. Oh, it used to be. Used to be one of those first, one of the first things we taught children. Nobody likes a tattletale. But now, virtually any public accomplishment comes with the obligatory follow-up snitch story a few days later. Like what happened with that sad schmuck who was supposed to host Jeopardy. I'm sorry, Mike, but we, the perfect people who have never made a mistake, we just can't let society be sullied by horrible people like you. Bye-bye. Yeah, he's right. Remember the Teen Vogue thing we talked about? My goodness. Fans of cable news will recognize the rising journalist Alexi McCammond, who was appointed editor of Teen Vogue, but then had to resign before her first day when some of her high school tweets suddenly became too much to bear. Tweets like, now Googling how to not wake up with swollen Asian eyes. (gasps) And, ha, you're so gay. And her resignation was endorsed by the hierarchy of the magazine, including the senior social media manager, Christine Davitt. Good for you, Christine. You helped catch the Zodiac Killer. Yeah. So spot on and so true. But wait, there's a twist. No, yes, maybe. Funny end of the story. After Alexi McCammond resigned for her innocuous tweets, someone went through Christine Davitt's old high school tweets and, oops, seems she tweeted the N-word twice to a white friend in 2009. Bye-bye. This is why I'm a little hopeful that this purity purge may end, because it's starting to eat its own. This love of snitching seems to be one of the few areas that is now truly bipartisan. Snitch Nation isn't about what side you're on. It's about this mindset where everyone is an amateur secret policeman and tattling is a virtue. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I mean, I there are people out there I know who, who are like, I, I don't know if I could take a big gig right now. I'd be afraid something's going to come back and haunt me. And I'm like, that's not a place to, you know, look, if you're if you're an insane human being and you've done some horrible things, that's one thing. But if you tweeted something when you were 11, you had no idea what the hell tweeting was. And now you're 21 years old and you're about to make your major league debut or you were. It, is that what we're going to do now? That's exactly what we're going to do. And it's a sad, sad state that we live in. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Six and six this weekend. My picks. I got the Packers tonight. I should be seven and six. 
But uh, and we didn't pick the Washington game because nobody really cares about Washington. But lost the Steelers, the Jags, the Saints, the Seahawks, Chargers, Chiefs let me down. But uh, Tampa Bay, another win, and Tom Brady, fifty years old. He joked about playing to last week. He's forty-four and he's off to his best start in history, I believe. That's insane. Have a good rest of your day. We'll do it again tomorrow. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.